Hey guys, and welcome back to the third episode of Off The Pedal. And you're gonna to have to excuse me for this one because over here in the UK at the minute, we've got some pretty strict coronavirus restrictions. So taking a car out isn't really feasible. So this one has actually been shot on my driveway in about six inches of snow in January. So yeah, you'll just have to bear with me for this one. The normal video style will be coming back soon enough. We've got plenty of things planned, obviously with the whole COVID-19 situation, things are getting put on hold slightly, but just bear with us and we'll be back to normal soon. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the future of classic cars. And this is quite an interesting one, especially to me, someone who's sort of quite a big fan of older stuff, especially these days. And over here in the UK, back in November of 2020, we actually had an announcement from the government and they basically brought forward the ban on sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2035 to 2030, which basically means we're now in the final decade of new petrol and diesel cars, in theory. I guess things could definitely change. So yeah, I mean, obviously I'm a massive fan of the internal combustion engine, as are probably many of you guys watching, but yeah, we definitely do need to change how we're doing things on the planet. The things, you know, the environment's struggling a little bit <laughs> um, and humans, you know, we're kicking out a lot of pollution every year. So things definitely need to change in one way or another. But when this announcement was made, there were lots of people quite concerned and understandably about the future of the classic car industry. Now over here in the UK, it generates roughly 18.3 billion in annual turnover and it employs in excess of 100,000 people. So it's a huge industry. There's an estimate that there's roughly uh, 1.6 million classic cars on the road here in the UK. And uh, overall, this, this big industry produces somewhere in the region of about 3 billion in tax revenues every year for the government. So it's a big deal and it's not just important to petrol heads, it's clearly quite significant in terms of, yeah, how many people it employs and how much money it generates for the government too. So quite recently, a, an organization called the Center for Economics and Business Research put out a report and uh, it published those figures that I've just mentioned. And it, it's highlighted some really interesting things. And I think a lot of people didn't realize just quite how big the industry actually was. And it's quite interesting as well because the jobs that are sort of held within this industry are overall pretty high skilled. And on average, 70% um, of people employed in the industry earn higher than the average wage in the UK. So, you know, these are pretty high skilled jobs. This isn't just kind of like menial tasks and things. This is people that really do know what they're doing. And you would understand that as soon as you start to look at some of these businesses involved in the classic car industry and it's, it's a huge thing it's very complex and uh yeah it's there's a lot of enthusiasts involved as well of course so basically the, there's, there's a big incentive to the government to not decimate the industry you're going to be putting lots of jobs at risk and um you're going to upset a lot of people so yeah i i do think the classic car market definitely does have a future it's fair to say as well that people that own classic cars are generally going to be enthusiasts themselves and um yeah it's you know, pe people who own a classic car are generally very enthusiastic, aren't they? And, and they love their cars. I mean, I can say that about the E30 that I'm sat in now. So I'm sure that the industry will have a hell of a lot of backing from those people. And also, to be honest, I think the government does want to keep it going anyway. So you know, I don't think we've got too much to worry about. Another interesting piece of information that was published in that report that I mentioned uh, says that on average in the UK, a classic car is only driven roughly 1,200 miles per year. Now, a classic car in the UK is basically anything that's older than 40 years old is classed as classic by the government. So the likes of um, some of the modern classics like this E30 aren't technically classics yet. Uh, but so anything sort of at the moment, I think up until April of 2021, anything made sort of before 1st of January 1980 is classed as a classic. And in, in the UK, that basically means that it's exempt from road tax and it's exempt from our annual check over the car, which is the MOT. So there's some benefits to be had there. So yeah, as I was saying, um, you know, a lot of classic cars basically do no mileage and the amount of CO2 they produce is only about sixth of that of an average uh, internal combustion engine car on the road. So yeah, even though these things aren't particularly clean for the environment, they do so little mileage. <laughs> They're so much better for the environment than your average petrol car anyway. So, you know, the environmental sort of factors aren't as big as you might think. So what do I think about how the classic car industry might change then into the future? Well, I think there's a lot of things that could happen. I think, you know, we might see a shift towards greener ways of doing things. And I think one of the big sort of things on the table at the minute is synthetic fuels. 
And it's interesting because Porsche themselves have just in, uh, invested about 18 million pounds, I think it was 20 million euros, into a synthetic fuel plant. I think it was based down in Chile in South America. And essentially what synthetic fuels are is they are synthesized hydrocarbons. So, you know, the likes of petrol and diesel fuels. So essentially how these synthetic fuels work is the whole point of them is meant to be carbon neutral. So what they do is they take water and they break that down into hydrogen and oxygen. And then they take carbon dioxide from the environment, filter that down to obtain the oxygen, and then they combine that oxygen with the hydrogen from the water to make your hydrocarbons and, um, and make your fuels. So I've, I'm no expert on this, but doing the research, this is a really sort of interesting concept. And essentially what it would mean is when you then go and burn that fuel, overall it's carbon neutral because the carbon dioxide produced by vehicles burning that fuel is collected and then used again in the production of the next batch of fuel. So this is a very interesting one and this could be the way internal combustion engine cars actually live on sort of long into the future and have their future secured. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going to happen there. In terms of production, it's, it's going to be very small scale. I think they're talking maybe making about 550 million litres um, sort of a year by, I think the year was 2026. So we're still quite a long way off that. And 550 million litres sounds like a lot, but I think in the UK annually we consume somewhere in the region of 46 billion litres. So it's absolutely minuscule. But, you know, th this is just one plant doing this. This is not to say... If this proves to be economically viable and sort of actually feasible from a physical standpoint, who knows who else could start making these synthetic fuels. And yeah, it, it could be really interesting. This could be a very good way to sort of move internal combustion engines into the future. So yeah, we, we've got the synthetic fuels on the horizon. I do think there will be shifts towards other things as well, maybe in terms of uh, the production of some of the spare parts and things that are used on classic cars. Maybe that will end up being a bit, bit greener, which who knows could raise prices and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of things that I think will change. In terms of like classic cars themselves, for me, I find modern cars less and less interesting with each year. And I mean, that is just my personal preference, but I think just the sort of intrusion of electronics, the sort of synthesized sort of driving experience that you have, um, you know, just piping the sound through the speakers into the car, it's just all, I'm not interested in that stuff. So for me, I'm, I'm more and more interested in older cars these days. And when I say older things, I'm talking generally from the 1980s onwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of the older stuff is interesting, to be honest. And I think you'll, what you'll find is you'll get petrol heads who aren't as interested in the modern stuff, especially if things really start to go like down the EV route. Um, I think you'll get a lot more people interested in older cars. And I can imagine there being quite a, like, a tight-knit community down the line with just like really kind of petrol heads and enthusiasts. And to, to be honest, that would be fantastic if that was the way, because yeah, um, it's gonna secure the future of classic cars. It's all gonna, also gonna keep some really cool things on the road as well. So that's always good. I mean, another interesting point is the resto mod scene. I mean, that's something that is definitely growing. Of course, you've got the likes of Singer in there, who, you know, they're, they're doing some fantastic work and some of the stuff they do, reinventing these old Porsche 911s and making them bespoke and yeah, really cool bits. You've probably seen as well the Singer ACS, which was a collaboration with Total Porsche. And yeah, it's just, it's they're doing some really cool things. And I think there's going to be a lot of things that go down that resto mod route. Um, there was that Cyan P1800, the thing based on the old Volvo P1800. There's just so many things that you can do to make these sort of old, maybe not as interesting cars interesting by changing their drivetrains and changing the suspension setups and all that stuff. And you can make them very, very cool. So yeah, in short, I think we have a lot of stuff to look forward to in the classic car scene. I think it's going to be one that's going to grow um, year on year, and I think it's going to become ever more popular. The 80s and 90s scene is becoming bigger and bigger. So many people buying things like this E30 and all sorts of things from that era. So yeah, we've got a lot to look forward to. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.